Welcome once again, my fellow manipulators of Digital Fate. I'm Richie, this is Capricorn. Today's deck is a twist off one of the top meta decks that's making the rounds on the ranked ladder, but I think the twist that we add really takes it to the next level, and I'm excited to show it to you. This one's called Evil Eye, and the idea is we're taking Azorius Oculus. You've probably seen that deck, where you're using the new Oculus card and Haughty Djinn with things like Helping Hand and Recommission to get it out of the graveyard super, super quick and get around that exile clause on the oculus but we're turning it up to 11 we're adding black for some key cards that really just help it have so much more staying power and so much more threat consistency uh threat density and i kind of love it before we break down the deck make sure you like the video if you haven't already it really does mean a lot when you guys like the video. It does help the video get out to so many more people. And without you guys liking the video, this channel would be nothing. So thank you guys so much for your support. Thank you to those that do it. Smash that like button. Help me get to 20k. Let's do the damn thing. Also, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. That's part of getting to the 20k. So let's do that. Uh, if you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Also, catch me live Monday through Friday over on Twitch. That's twitch.tv slash quarantine Capricorn. Because if I'm alive and I'm breathing, I'm there and I'm streaming. In fact, I'm about to start a stream right now as soon as I finish recording this. Also, this video has been brought to you by Wonders of the First, but I'll tell you about that later. Let's just break down the deck. All right, so this deck is glorious. We're taking the idea that you've probably seen on the ranked ladder recently where we're using... Abhorrent Oculus with cards that can bring it back from the graveyard for very, very cheap. So first of all, Abhorrent Oculus, 3 mana for a 5-5 five, five creature eye. As an additional cost to cast this spell, exile 6 cards from your graveyard. That makes it a lot harder to play, and a lot of times it takes you to the mid to late game in order to be able to play a card like this if you're playing it fairly. Uh, it also has flying, and at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, you manifest dread. So if you can get this out early, you just start filling up the board with creature after creature after creature, while also dumping the best of the top two cards for the graveyard into the graveyard, uh, and helping those synergies. So the eye is really nasty if you can get it out early. It's just you need to get around that exile six cards clause. And the way that we do that is with recommission, and Helping Hand. Helping, Helping Hand being only one mana as a sorcery returns any creature card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. And then Recommission ends up costing us two mana, but it comes back onto the battlefield untapped and with an additional plus one plus one counter. These are the best cards in standard right now that have this type of effect for this specific deck. Now, you guys have seen this on the rank ladder probably already. It's a really good combo and a really good core of a deck. But what we're trying to do is take it one step further uh, by introducing a third color to bring some even more busto into the mix. And we're doing that with black. There's three main reasons we're playing black. The first of which is it simply gives us access to more surveil lands, which are really, really good in this deck. If we can turn one surveil land, we have a chance of hitting one of our threats, binning it straight into the graveyard, and then being able to bring it back as early as turn two. Uh, but even if it's not like the god hand, the god play on turn one and two, they're still super helpful even as you progress later in the game, being able to help you fill up the yard not only with threats to get back, but also more instants or sorceries for some of our other, other synergies in the deck. So it lets us run four shadowy backstreet, two undercity sewers, two meticulous archive, and the restless reef. Just one copy of this, because once we have one, we don't really need another one. But it is a little bit of extra value, puts more aggro on the board if you're in a late game where you just need to close out the game. Uh, spend four mana, swing with a 4-4 Death Toucher. But what really makes this card great in this deck is it allows us to self-mill ourselves four cards, so it feeds into the synergies. 
And if we weren't playing black, we wouldn't be able to play this card. And if we weren't playing a third color of some sort, we wouldn't be able to play as many surveil lands. So the first reason to go black is simply so that we have access to these lands that synergize with what we're doing. But there are two other really good reasons to play black. The first is Likeness Looter. Comes down as a 2 mana 1-1 one, one flying fairy shapeshifter. We can tap it to loot, draw a card and discard a card, which means even right off the bat it's super helpful in getting the things we want into the graveyard that might be in our hand already that maybe we drew into or they started in our starting hand, like the Oculus itself. We're able to put that in the graveyard while drawing, while getting some card advantage, which does feed into the synergies of the deck, but then what makes this card even better is we can pay X mana to make it into a copy of any creature in our graveyard that costs X or less. So this is another way of getting around the exile clause on Abhorrent Oculus, because if one is in our graveyard, we don't have to pay three mana and exile six cards to turn the likeness looter into an Oculus. We just have to pay the three mana. So it adds even more value in that way. And then also because it's a fairy, it synergizes with another important card in the deck being Picklock Prankster. Because when we cast the adventure side of Picklock Prankster for two mana, free the Fey, we mill four cards, put an instant sorcery or fairy card from among the milled cards into our hand. So it gives us even more things that we can hit off of free the Fey so that we have less of a chance of whiffing with that and just more versatility. If we're in a situation where we have plenty of big creatures in the yard that we need to copy, and none of our reanimation spells that we have access to, we can at least possibly grab a likeness looter off the picklock prankster and then play that, turn that into a copy of one in our graveyard and start trying to close out the game with it that way. So likeness looter has a lot of little bits of silver lining value that it adds as an enabler, as another thing that can become the win condition, and as a way to get extra value off the picklock prankster. It's just a really, really great addition, so we're running three copies of that. The last black card that we're splashing black for is Zoraline Cosmos Caller, which is kind of perfect in this deck. I was originally running three of these in testing, but what I realized is there's one little thing that makes this not quite as good as I'd like, but it's still super, super good, and we need to run at least one. So, first of all, 3 mana for a 3-3 Legendary Bat Cleric. Has Flying and Vigilance. Whenever a bat you control attacks, you gain one life. All of that is nice, but it's the ability that matters. When Zoraline enters or attacks, you may pay 2 mana and 2 life. When you do return a non-land permanent card with mana value 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield with a finality counter on it. So what's great about Zoraline is if we have Zoraline in our graveyard and one of our other big threats, maybe the Abhorrent Oculus, we can actually target the Zoraline with something like Helping Hand for just one mana, bring it back, and then as soon as it enters the battlefield, it triggers its other ability for two mana, we then also still bring back the Oculus. So for a total of three mana, we can get back the Zoraline and the Oculus, and if we're facing down targeted removal and not sweepers, that puts our opponent in a difficult situation because they absolutely have to kill the Oculus, but then when they do, our Zoraline probably survives and is able to then swing in and bring it back with the two mana uh, from the attack ability. So we're able to just get insane value in this deck with Zoraline and also able to do a crazy two for one value play. Um, off of like Helping Hand or Recommission by targeting the Zoraline and then targeting an Oculus, which is nice. So we absolutely need to play this. It just allows us to get so much advantage onto the value, uh, onto the battlefield so quickly that it, it's a must include if we're playing black. But the one downside is the finality counter. You have to be careful with that finality counter. So I would say you want to sort of utilize all of your other options for bringing stuff back first. Make sure you're out of like Helping Hands, Recommissions and that sort of thing. Uh, before you use bringing something back with Zoraline as sort of like your last ditch effort because if you do bring back the Oculus, now they kill it with just normal destroy removal, it's not going to go back to the graveyard so that you can keep bringing it back, it's going to get exiled. So you do have to be careful and kind of play around that. But that being said, just having access to the insanity that this card allows, you know, the two for one value off of your reanimation spells or just repeatedly bringing back back things from the graveyard every turn uh, with the attack trigger. It's just too good to ignore, so we absolutely have to include one. But 
I did stray away from including three because of that finality counter. So uh, again, take it with a grain of salt, but I do think it's worth the inclusion. In addition to the four Oculuses, the one Zora line, and to an extent the three likeness looters as far as big hits for our reanimation spells, we're also running four copies of Hottie Jin. This is just becomes a game ending threat in the mid to late game, can just swing in and just close out the game all by itself. It also is going to reduce the cost of some of our spells while it's in play. Um, but it's really, really good in conjunction with the Oculus and the Looter. If we're only running the Oculus and the Zora line for Looter to become copies of to get really crazy value off of, um, we, we really risk the chance of kind of whiffing. But by playing the Haughty Jin, we now have four Haughty Jins, four Oculus, one Zora line. That's nine really good things that we can turn the Likeness Looter into. Increases the consistency of always having something to take advantage of with the likeness looter while also just increasing the number of threats we can get onto the battlefield and there is a careful balance between threats enablers and just ways to fill up the graveyard um so you do have to balance that carefully but i think four oculuses and four gins because they're not legendary is the way to go with just the one zora line and then three likeness looters to uh help round out that package now starting at the bottom of the curve, you have some of the typical spells you're used to seeing in the Azorius version of this deck. So we've got four into the Flood Maw, just to get rid of key creatures or even non-land permanents if we have to that are stopping us from winning the game. We're also using four Slate of Hand because they help us dig for what we need while also putting a sorcery into the graveyard. Sometimes that can matter for things like the, uh, the Haughty Jin. Moving on to the 2-drop slot, we have those 4 picklock prank Pranksters that we already talked about because they can get us an insane amount of value. We're also running 4 Moment of Truth. I do think this is the best 2-mana spell um, to do the things we want in this deck. I did experiment a little bit with a couple of other different spells that are doing uh, similar things, functioning similarly. Uh, but I think Moment of Truth is the best one because it lets us look at the most amount of cards while getting to choose any one of those cards to the, go to the graveyard and any one of those to go into our hand. And I think that matters. That could make the difference in actually getting a threat into the graveyard or actually getting one of our reanimation spells into our hand or potentially both. So I think Moment of Truth is the best two mana spell to perform all of the functions that we really want to. And then we're also running four founding the third path because this lets us just free cast one of our spells anyway when we play it. But then it also mills us four cards on chapter two so that we can get even more stuff into the yard to enable our synergies. And then on chapter three, it lets us recast something like a recommission or helping hand from our graveyard uh, without having to use up a card from our hand, which is really, really nice. Uh, but even if we don't have access to those cards, we can still recast some of the other stuff like Moment of Truth and Slate of Hand, and even into the Flood Maw if we need to remove a key threat. So, founding the third path gets us an insane amount of value. Uh, that being said, we did have to carefully balance to make sure we had enough actual instants and sorceries so that Haughty Jin becomes a relevant threat. We do have the four into the Flood Maws, the four Slide of Hand, the four Moment of Truth, four Recommission, four Helping Hand. So we have a package of 20 instants and sorceries, which is exactly one third of the deck. And I really think that's the kind of the key number you want to hit to make sure Hadi Jin is as relevant a threat at all times as possible while still having things in the graveyard that are permanents and things you can hit with recommissions, helping hands, or just any permanent that you can hit with a Zora line, which is re also really important to note. We can bring back the Picklock Prankster or the Moment of Truth, or not the Moment of Truth, the, uh, the Founding the Third Path with the Zora line as well to get extra value that way. So sometimes you might want to go that direction and not use up the Zora line on your Oculus or your Jin, having to put a finality counter on those since those are things that we want to go back to the graveyard when they die, but maybe just get the extra value off the Zora line by bringing back like a founding the third path, which can still give you a lot of value. So I really like all of the different nuanced ways all of the cards in this deck synergize together. And like I said, I do think it's worth splashing the black, even if it's just for extra surveil lands and restless reef, but getting to include likeness looter and Zoraline just really turns this deck up to 11 and makes it hit that much harder, makes it that much more consistent. The threats just keep coming. It feels like we're playing with seven copies of Oculus instead of four, which is just really, really nice. 
I can't say enough good things about this deck, so I'm gonna just shut up now, and I'm gonna let the deck speak for itself. Let's check out the games. I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Wonders of the First. Wonders of the First is a brand new collectible card game similar to games like Magic the Gathering, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon, featuring a unique action-based resource economy that helps avoid pitfalls like Mana Flood or Mana Screw, and a battlefield containing multiple realms that unlock over time as you fight for control of the stones. The first 400 card set is called Existence and will launch to retail in the fall, but playtest team starter kits are available to order now. And they haven't forgotten about all you collectors out there. The game contains alternate borderless art variants, as well as highly sought after limited edition numbered prints, culminating in a one of one stone foil. And the best part is that the developers have a community first approach, with eight print and play decks available on their website, as well as a version of the game available on Tabletop Simulator, all for free. For more information, be sure to check out WondersCCG.com today. That's Wonders ccg.com All right, this actually looks pretty decent. We'll keep it. Start with the sewers, try to bin something good. Caves of Koilos. Yeah, we'll get rid of it. We need to get as close as possible to our threats as quickly as possible. We can't waste extra turns finding them. Which means we don't have time to draw a Caves of Koilos. Alright, we do have a recommission, which is nice. We're going to start with you. We'll play Founding the Third Path, Chapter 1. And then we will Moment of Truth. For free. Uh, put one into your hand. We really don't need another recommission, do we? We'll put that in the yard, and we'll put one of the lands back. I am going to grab a land, though, so we can play an untapped land next turn. That way, if we are still digging, we can play multiple things. We can fit in a two-drop and the slate of hand, which could end up being important. Or, we could recommission something back and helping hand something back if we end up milling two hits on the four cards that we mill. And against a deck like this, I think that's what we want. I don't think I don't think we want to play around sweepers, at least not at this point. I think we want to just really go ham. If we can. Alright, let's mill. One hit. Just the one hit though. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna jam a likeness looter. And a helping hand. That way, if he does kill the Haughty Jin, we can just turn the Likeness Looter into a Haughty Jin and swing anyway. And then recommission it back. If we want to. We are going to be able to cast an instant sorcery from our yard next to him, which is nice. We want to put a stop. Activate only as a sorcery. Okay, okay. Fine. We don't have a whole lot of options here. I would love, love, love to have been able to do this after activating the Likeness Looter. Um, but either way, we're saving value, right? And that's really the whole point. So... Drop another Founding the Third Path. Try to start filling up the graveyard even more for Haughty Jin. And we'll 
play the sleight of hand for free. One into my hand, one on the bottom. Well, we'll put that in one our hand. And we'll play the land. And I mean, I guess we just swing, right? We really don't need to loot right now. Not when we're about to mill four. I'd rather save the Flood Maw for a big threat, if possible. Alright, let's swing one. He does have a Squirming Emergence ready. So... One, two, three. Only has four, though. So we can't get the Atraxa back yet. He just needs more stuff in the yard. It's easy, Max. Bitter Triumph, the Hadi Jin, sure. We kind of wanted that to happen anyway. Three cards I would want to exile with the Oculus. Don't quite want to play it yet. We will become the Haughty Jin. And then we will bring back the Haughty Jin. And then we will attack with the Haughty Jin. Do your worst. Do your worst. Staring down the barrel of lethal, so he needs flying blocker or removal. And chances are if he casts removal, he can't make any kind of big play in addition to it. So I actually really like that. He's at 7, so he could get an Atraxa back if he had another land. An Assassin's Trophy. Sure. Decline. But we gave it a nice shuffle. Copy it and cast it. So we've got a Haughty Jin in there, right? Guess we recommission. Get back the Haughty Jin. And then we will archive another Haughty Jin. And then we will recommission that Haughty Jin. <laughs> and we will pass the turn and hold up into the Flood Maw. Doesn't have a Valgavoth to get back, so that's nice. But he can get back an Atraxa, which we can deal with with Into the Flood Maw. Kind of the same thing with Lumra. So I think he's just dead. Well, before he draws things that might be able to stop this. Let's do it. And now I think we got him. I mean, he could get an untapped land. Ooh, no untapped lands. Oh, he's got no untapped lands. He would need the untapped land in the removal. Good game, my friend. We just keep coming back for more. We just keep coming back for more. Is he done? No, he's still trying. He's still thinking. Oh wait, the Archive does come out on tap because Spelunking. I forgot about that. So he's, he does still have a chance here. He 
He's gonna have to play what? Well, the Forgotten. Bounce a Haughty Jin. It's really his only chance. It's not over yet. It's not over yet. But it's definitely close. We're gonna do this. Mill ourselves. Puts us at 29. We can still survive the Jace. That's kind of his hope, is to get us with the Jace. But I don't think he can. We're still left with like 10 cards. He doesn't have the mana to cast a Traxa. He doesn't even have the mana to cast a Loomer, really. Plays a Whale. We could get him to 1 with the Restless Reef, but then we end up putting ourselves within arm's length of the Jace. Emotions are distractions. Focus on the facts. So, I think he's trying to make us get rid of nine. I know where to find all nope. the answers. Hmm. Okay. We got him. I mean, we were going to play double threats and then just push the advantage next turn. This looks decent. We can't really get started with the game plan until turn two, but that's okay. Then again, we are on the draw, so we might be able to pull something out. All right, we're going to start with the Sea Chrome Coast. Optimistic Scavenger. All right, play the Verge. I mean... I think probably founding the third path plus moment of truth is the way we want to go. Uh, let's see, what do we want in our hand? I guess another moment of truth, right? We have plenty of the white spells. Put Helping Hand into the graveyard. Put the land back in the deck. Ollie's favor, Demonic Ruckus. Uh, okay. Hmm. Well, we'll mill four cards. We do get an eye. We do get an eye, which is really nice. But we need to play Recommission if we want to be able to block the Scavenger. No, it has Menace. It has Menace. That's a damn shame. Alright, I guess we'll free the Fae again. Put another Prankster into our hand. And cast Helping Hand and get the, get the Eye. The Trample and the Menace is problematic. Very, very problematic. But I think we can afford to take a hit this turn. I think it's next turn that's going to be the bigger problem when the scavenger's even bigger. So we'll be okay. We get to play into the Flood Maw for free. Probably the play. We could also do like a Slate of Hand if we want. Oh god. Well, here we go.
targets himself. Weird. Weird, weird, weird. Swings with the scavenger. I'm so confused. I am so confused. I mean, he's probably going to have the uh, the hexproof thing, right? So I actually think we gift a tapped fish, and we return the demonic ruckus. That slows him down considerably. Because the hex proof won't work. The hex proof will not work. Uh, let's just play out a picklock prankster and have another blocker. And no attacks. If we could just drag out the game, we're going to get so much value off this Oculus that eventually it won't really matter what he does. So I think that's what we need to do. We don't want to tempt fate. Put the instant in the yard. Seems fine. I'm a little bit worried about a sheltered by ghost. Sheltered by ghosts would be rough right now. Demonic Ruckus. See, he has to replay it. He has to waste the two mana. Pupper. Pupper, I'm, I'm recording right now. I need you to lay down, okay, buddy? I need you to lay down. Oh, here he comes. Trample Menace. <sighs> well, I think we just try to block the other stuff, right? Let this guy through. Is there anything he can cast? B four. Yeah, I guess we do have to block it. I guess we do have to block it. Right? Because if he has a rage, he just wins. So let's try it like that. All right. He had a shard mage's rescue. Which isn't quite enough. He did he does two to us. His mouse is dead no matter what. We get rid of his double strike. Alright, decides to put it on the scavenger. That is fine. That is more than fine. Let's see. Let's start with Free the Fae. Uh, into the Flood Maw. <laughs> And now we'll into the Flood Maw the Scavenger. And, I mean, at this point, I just I just want to get out creatures. Let's play the Likeness Looter. And we'll swing. I highly doubt he has a Haste creature. 
But even if he does, we've got blockers. And now we try to race. Here's where we try to race. We still want to be careful and hold back enough blockers just in case. But we try to race. Alright, so the best thing you could have is a rage. Which would turn this into a 6-4. Shard Mage's Rescue, sure. No trample though, and only a planes, so you can't give it trample. You should be able to pretty easily just chump block. Alright. Oh, chump. I need you to lay down, buddy. Dad's recording. Alright, this is gonna be rad. We're gonna shadowy backstreet. Put the Oculus in the yard. Recommission. Bring back an Oculus. Likeness Looter. Pay three. Turn it into an Oculus. Force him to block with his scavenger or he's dead. And then we manifest dread three times next turn. That seems glorious. That's so good. He's got to have a sweeper, right? But there's no way... In a deck like this, he's going to have a sweeper. Put the Haughty Jin down. We'll put a Zora line down. And we'll put... I guess a land. Down to 20 cards in our deck, but we absolutely got him next turn. Absolutely. Three Oculuses. Likeness Looter is so good. <laughs> Likeness Looter is so good. Plays the Shard Mage's Rescue. Tries to dig to find answers. Can't find the answers. Oh. If he was able to give both Trample and Double Strike, then that would have been something. It still wouldn't have quite been enough. He would have needed to get rid of the Oculus as well, and then he would have had me, I think. Hexproof Double Strike. Sure. Oh, come on. <laughs> I wanted to flip my guys. All right, this actually looks pretty good. Slate of hand on one, hopefully find what we need. Or maybe we meticulous archive and try to dump something. That could work. If we get lucky and dump an eye, and then turn two slate of hand into helping hand. Oh, there's a helping hand right there. Can we get the eye? Nope. Uh, I think we need to just dig deeper and find our creatures, so we're going to get rid of it as much as I'd like to keep it. Alright, we'll start with a Sea Chrome Coast. Founding the Third Path. Chapter 1. Even the dog's excited. And then we'll play Chart of Course if our opponent ever lets us do something. <laughs> I don't know why it took them so long to just come to terms with us casting a Founding the Third Path. But okay. Tear Asunder, sure. Discard a card. I mean, we discard the Haughty Jin, right? That's fine. That's fine.
We are kind of running out of gas. We're a little high on land count, so that's a bit worrisome. Let's try this. Helping hand. Does he kill the haughty djinn? Alright, well, we're going to play the likeness looter. That way, if he does kill the haughty djinn, we can just turn the looter into one. That seems good. Overlord of the Hauntwoods. Alright, he's just... He's just going ham. Let's see what we can do here. Slate of Hand. Guess we'll take a recommission. Uh, play out a Restless Reef. Let's uh, draw a discard. I guess we'll discard... Hmm... discard the helping hand and we'll swing five we'll hold up our into the flood maws pass the turn he probably sun falls here which is gonna feel really bad we're just super light on threats In fact maybe I should have waited to play the likeness looter force him to deal with just one threat at a time and don't take a chance when it comes to sweepers. I mean, that's fine. You take whatever you want, sir. You take whatever you want. Doesn't even know what to take. I mean, it's obvious we're just going to into the Flood Maw, the Bat. Uh, Alright, we're going to start with the Likeness Looter. Dump the land. Play the back street. Dump the land. Not having the best luck, honestly. Let's just swing with the Haughty Jin, hold up into the Flood Maw. We're going to save this Likeness Looter in case he sweeps. But he can't really use Spot Removal because if he kills the Haughty Jin, the Looter just becomes the Haughty Jin. Boonbringer Valkyrie. Yeah, that's... That's about it. Uh... One land, no blue mana. We have to mulligan that. We have to mulligan it. We have to. We do have a Zora line, though. We do have a Zora line. We can keep this one. I think we want the Zora line back in there, actually. We don't want too many of these in our opening hand. Too many of the things we want to hit. Because we want the ability to surveil them away. So we're going to start with a Meticulous Archive. Dump the Likeness Looter. Does give us something else to hit. Alright, we're going to Slate of Hand. I mean, I guess we put that into our hand. And then... We'll play the Undercity Sewers. Surveil a land away. Pass the turn. Alright, we got a Sorcery. We got a Likeness to there. Alright, we get a Poison Counter. So it's gonna be like that, I guess. Let's just force him to deal with the Haughty Djinn. He will, but it'll slow down the rest of his game plan, and we kind of want it in the graveyard anyway. Alright, let's back street, dump a land. 
Let's see if we can find some love. Let's see if we can find some love. Uh, hmm. I mean, I guess we could have the Oculus. Because we could go Likeness Looter. And we could start dumping Oculuses. If we want to. Serum Snare, sure. Distorted Curiosity, drawing more cards. Flood Farm Verge. We do have six cards in the yard. I don't really want to get rid of them, though. So we're going to start with a Moment of Truth. I mean, I guess we want the Into the Flood Maw, huh? That's two Into the Flood Maws. Eight cards in the yard. One of which is a Haughty Gin. Alright, we'll play the Likeness Looter out. That lets us leave up one mana to use and into the Flood Maw. To get even more instant sorceries into our graveyard so that we can swing with the Likeness Looter after turning it into a Haughty Gin. kind of have to race his poison now which is really difficult now it's even more difficult and he's not playing anything for us to use into the flood maw on is this just all spells definitely seems it all right well we have to do something one Two, three, four, five. It's a day late, a dollar short for that. Six. We'll keep the haughty gin and as many instant sorceries as possible. Bring the ending. Good lord. He just has a full grip still. Absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. The cards are gone. Well, I guess we'll try to recommission. Praska's fall. Okay. Okay. I get it. Puts us up to seven. He can give us three this turn, right? He's got six cards. I'd be very surprised if we see another turn. Very, very surprised. Okay. Draws two. Plays a land. Poison. Draws. Has to spend three mana to do it, though. Recommission. Well, we kind of just have to go for it, right? Our only chance is to play Oculus... Hit a Haughty Gin off the Oculus next turn. Draw cards that can fill up our graveyard and then attack for lethal. Which isn't going to happen. Dude. This deck is insane. Doesn't even have any new cards in it. <laughs> this deck is so crazy. It just never runs out of cards. Ever. Bandit. Enough snoring, buddy. 
All right, this actually looks pretty good. We're gonna keep this. We're gonna shadowy back street and try to dump something on turn one. Pick lock prankster. Do we actually want to dump that? I don't think we do. I think we want to keep that. I think we want that to be our turn two play, actually. Dollmaker's shop. All of our plays are instant speed, so we'll pass the turn. Do it on his turn. Toby. Could into the Flood Maw. I think this is probably better, though. <sighs> Let's grab the Picklock Prankster. Leave the Sorceries in the yard. This is tricky. We need to do some bouncing, right? I don't think we can get super crazy right now. We're gonna play it safe. We're gonna play the picklock prankster. Pass the turn. Before he goes to combat, we're gonna bounce the token. Sad, sad little man. Couldn't swing with Toby. How wonderful. How wonderful was that? How wonderful. Alright. We'll play a Hadijin. And we'll hold up the rest of our stuff. Swing with the Picklock Prankster. We don't need to Moment of Truth. Or free the Fey yet. We can afford to wait. See what he does on his turn. I mean, we're, we're still going to play it no matter what. It doesn't change that. But it might change what we choose to keep. Destroy all untapped creatures. Well, here we go. Let's grab a recommission. Double recommission. But do we want to? We're up against control. I think we actually want to bide our time. Force him to deal with every single threat one at a time. That's what I'm thinking. Now he has to deal with the Oculus. Plays another Dollmaker shop. He must be desperate then. Alright, let's Moment of Truth. We will put Recommission into our hand. Put the Helping Hand in the graveyard. Put the Sea Chrome Coast back in the deck. Play the back street. Hmm. Do we dump it? Nah, we'll keep it. We'll keep it. Let's swing. See what he's got. Alright, we put him at 11. We know a sweeper's coming, right? So we just end the turn. Virtue of loyalty. Sure. That's fine. Made sure to choose the picklock prankster. If we happen to be able to be within one point of lethal and just need something to swing over his ground guys, we can always turn this face up. 
So it is it is better to grab that than the land. In fact, it might be good right here to do this. And see what he does. Three damage target attacking a blocking creature. Okay, so turning it face up wouldn't really matter. That's fine though. We get rid of his Elspeth smite. That's really good. What else, sir? Exercise the demon. One into your hand. Alright. Put the Oculus in the yard. We'll take the likeness leader. Recommission. An Oculus. Let's play the Likeness Looter. Because it looks like a minimal enough threat that he doesn't feel the need to hit it. But it kind of forces him to use the Sweeper if he has it. Because if he kills the Oculus... We just turn the looter into an oculus? Yeah. That's fine. That's quacktastic. Get back a hottie gin. The real question is does he have another sunfall? He very well could. But if, if he has a second one, it's very, very, very likely that's, that's the end of it. And this forces him to have to have a sweeper the turn after he already used a sweeper. So chances go way up for us. No blocks. If he had a sweeper, he would have used it before doing something like that. Which means now he has to contend with our board state. We've got another haughty gin in the yard too. Well, we'll start with uh we'll start with a swing. See if he has it. Decline. We don't need to bring something back with Zoraline right now. Let's see what we can dump with the archive. Yeah, I mean, I guess we keep it. Uh, we definitely want to play this. What else do we have in here? Just the one Haughty Gin? Yeah. I mean... Let's just go for it. Could be making four, four, five fives next turn. And we need to be prepared for that. allows us to block one of them and survive so that we can crack back and win. And he only has just enough mana to do that. So 
So it kind of puts him in a position where he can't really do that. Alright, we'll just block with the picklock prankster. One dude's got flying. So he can block the haughty gin. Guess we gotta go for it, right? life and we'll get back a picklock prankster so that we can have another blocker he has to block the haughty gin so we get to kill the elspeth if he had a sweeper i think he would have used it last turn so this is where we're trying to just go all out because he's trying to just go all out and win he might actually have it this time because he's wide enough that as soon as he unlocks that other room, it's going to be brutal. What are you thinking, Wajman? man? I think he's just getting cold feet about it. He's got the lethal. He's got two unblocked attackers. And they'll all be 7-7s. Seven wow. He's just... He's too scared. He's too scared. That's crazy. He's gonna sunfall? Is he gonna sunfall? That's... That's nutty. He had the lethal there. Did he just not realize it? Nah, I think he has like super cold feet right now. But if he just thought it through and did the math, he'd realize. What? What? Why? Why didn't he just unlock Porcelain Gallery? Thanks so much for checking out my channel. I'd like to give a huge shout out to all of my patrons over at Patreon. Without you guys, this channel would not be possible. So honestly, thank you from the bottom of my heart for all of your contributions. If you haven't yet, like and subscribe. The more likes we get and the quicker we get them, the bigger this channel will grow and the faster it will grow. I'd love nothing more than this channel to become something very special for you guys, but it's entirely up to you how fast that happens. Also, if you'd like more deck text, that's somewhere over there and if you'd like to see what else the channel's been up to lately that's somewhere up that way also subscribe circle below do all the things